Hi and welcome to our next section. In this section, we're going to take a look at authentication. Basically, authentication is proving you are who you say you are. So this is important when we're trying to get access to computers, when we're trying to get access to websites, and we're going to take a look at the different methods of authentication, as well as password, password creation, and some other methods that you might see emerging now as far as proving you are who you say you are. So let's begin first by looking at the three forms of authentication. And this is true regardless of any security books or videos you may watch. We all kind of agree that there are three forms of authentication, which is something you know, something you have, and something about you. Now, two-factor authentication is typically the best way to go for a lot of this stuff. The old days of one method isn't enough. Now we usually have to go either two or three of these methods. So either we're combining something you know with something you have, or something you know with something about you, or something you know with something you have and something about you. It's becoming more and more necessary as the bad guys are becoming more and more sophisticated in breaking into systems that we don't want them into. So the first one, something you know, is passwords and usernames. This is something that we're all familiar with. So for example, your username is either you assigned it to yourself, either you came up with your own username or it was given to you by an organization or by some sort of commercial entity. But your username is your first part of something you know. The password is the second part of something you know, which is either again the password that you created or a password that was given to you randomly by your organization. Now there are some general rules of passwords and depending on who you read or who you listen to, the, the rules of passwords can be humongous. We're just going to present some big hints, some big rules, some big general ideas when it comes to creating a password. The first one is don't use any word that you can find in a dictionary. So if you come up with a word for a password and you can find it in a dictionary, find a new password. The reason for this is because there are hacking programs that will run what we call a brute force attack. It's a dictionary attack where it will bah, 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 every word in a dictionary at the system. And so you don't want to have any word that you can find in a dictionary in your password. Do not keep a copy of the password where others can see it. Now, I'm an educator by trade. And teachers, for some reason, we tend to put our passwords on sticky notes and put them on the monitor or we put them under the mouse pad because apparently the mouse pad is as clever a place to hide something as the welcome mat in the by the front door. So don't put a copy of your password where others can see it. Also, never, ever, ever, ever give your password to anyone else for any reason. Now, this rule seems like a no-brainer, but you'd be amazed how many people don't follow the rule. Listen to the rule again. Never give your password to anyone else for any reason. There is no system administrator. There is no bank. There is no website. There is no anyone out there who needs to get your password. If they need to access your account, believe me, an administrator can override your settings and access your account. The difference is, is that they leave a log. They leave a trace that they access that information. So never give out your password, nor will any legitimate organization ever, ever, ever ask you for your password. And I know I'm beating a dead horse, but folks, people do this all the time. In fact, I could almost, I'm, I bet my students this, that if I was to call from a school phone and I called 50 people and made up some great sounding story, I could get at least five to 10 passwords. Don't do it. <laughs> so some other rules, make your password at least 10 characters long. Now, depending on who you read, some will say eight. 10 seems to be the average between those who are less paranoid versus those who are really paranoid. So 10 characters is a good middle ground. Mix your upper and lower cases together. Passwords are case sensitive. What I mean by that is an uppercase P is different than a lowercase P when it comes to your password. 
add some numbers and special characters to your password. So add some ones, some twos, some threes, add some at signs, some, some pound signs, that's, you kids now know those as hashtags. Add those things to your passwords. It makes it that much harder to figure it out. Do not use the same password for all your accounts. I know you probably have a bajillion accounts and keeping track of all the passwords can be tiresome and tedious. The problem is, is if a bad guy gets your password, they probably, like most people, have passwords to a lot of different accounts. So if they get into your Facebook, they get into your Twitter, they can get into your bank account, they can get into all sorts of accounts. So try not to use the same password for everything that you have out there. Also, don't use passwords that are easily guessed. What I mean by that is if they know anything about you, you don't want them to be able to figure out your pet's name or your birthday or your kids' names or your spouse's names or your parents' names. You want to avoid using things that would kind of go with who you are. You want to make sure these names are not easily, your passwords are not easily guessed. Also, finally, consider putting a password on your devices. So for example, on my tablet here, let me pull this up, I have, and ooh, you can see the reflection. You can see I have, and you can see my notes right there, I have a password on my tablet. What this does, and I also have a password on my Droid phone, what this does is it allows us, see, little password there, it allows us to keep our phones and our tablets a little bit more secure if they're lost or if they're stolen. It gives us a little bit more time to hopefully get home or get to some other computer so we can either shut them down remotely, wipe them remotely, or put a signal on it to trace where it's at. So consider putting a password on your mobile devices. You can't go wrong by doing that. The rest of this section, we're going to talk about little bitty things, uh, little short videos. So, for example, the next one's going to be about smart cards. And then we're going to talk about security tokens and biometrics. So the next few videos are going to be shorter.